Yeah, I think we lost your video again. Oh, oh there's back. Yeah, there's back. Okay. All right. I guess it's my uh, my daughter streaming 4K on different devices. <laughs> <laughs> So, so Matthew. Yes. It is quite hot here. It today. is. It's yes. very hot here. Yeah. It is awesome to be with you in person. Yes. And yes. The, uh, you know, I don't think. I, uh, well, actually, we've never done one in person. No, we haven't. Uh, this yeah, is well, the first. Always, always been a, been a far. So, you know, here, it. Yep. Yeah, yeah, here at a you know company event in uh, in Vegas. Yes. You know, and, yep. uh, so getting uh, getting educated on all the the new and cool things that are in the cloud. So introduce our, yep. our guest here. Yep. So today we have uh, have with us all the way from Germany, uh, Henny. Um, so he's a, a peer of ours that has done some some pretty cool things with uh, nice. with the customer of his. Yeah. Um, he has, uh, has some background in some of our, our data capabilities, and um, I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing what he's got to say. Oh, good so, then. All right. Nice so, to meet you, Henning. Yeah, nice so, Henning, uh, you know, why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, about some of the cool things that you're doing you know, from a data perspective with your customer? Yeah. We're doing really, really great stuff. And one of the most uh, interesting projects that we did so far is a project called Extolo. It has been in news. It has been also on the Mobile World Congress uh, in, in in March. So where our CEO, so this, our CEO Satya and um, the CEO from Daimler were on stage together, and we're talking about this project, which was uh, pretty cool. And it's actually the move from Daimler to um, to to move its complete on-premise data lake to Azure, uh, which cool. is. A, a quantum leap for, for Daimler in terms of um, developers which now have the possibility to actually develop at scale on uh, globally. And this is uh, what we can talk about today, actually. And that was involved from the CSU side. So I did the first drawings, the first pictures, I did the POCs, and uh, I guided um, the customer on his journey. It was something like a trusted trusted partner. So. Uh, very, very cool. So, when you say data lake, you know, for somebody that might not have some background on that, you know, I'm picturing, uh, you know, we're looking at a, at a pool here at a resort. You know, I'm picturing a big body of water uh, holding data. You don't understand what a lake means. That's a pool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was really something like uh, something dead lying around. I mean, a data lake on premises, um, like we see in, in most of the, the big companies here, is. Um, First of all, it's uh, something that's hard to work with as a developer. It's hard to it's hard to use it because it's, it's so hidden somewhere in the internal infrastructure. And on the other side, typically, if it's uh, being deployed on premises, it's quite cumbersome to use and it's unflexible. So the one, the first or the second customer of that uh, on-premise data lake, they still might be happy. Um, but then with the third and the fourth. It gets more and more unflexible because uh, people need to have um, to have different uh, load profiles, so they want to utilize the cluster in different ways. It would be be great to have some uh, you know understanding about exactly what you know what kind of you know business problem that uh, Daimler is trying to solve. And um, you know I know it sounds like you got some really good publicity out of it with um, you know Satya being on, on stage with um, you know Daimler's uh, CEO. Uh, be you know if you could provide some you know some context to our viewers and. What, what they're trying to solve, and then uh, how you use Data Lake to actually address that. Yeah, sure. Let's uh, let's go into some kind of details. So this is part of the public success story. So everything that I'm that I'm sharing is uh, is, uh, is publicly available, so you can go through that uh, if you're interested. So this is a statement in the middle from from our customer. So the head of the um, uh, the Center of Excellence for Big Data at Daimler. So he was basically telling this on-premise solution would have led them nowhere. And uh, it was inflexible, and it was, let's say, um, almost um, impossible to scale it globally. And this was the biggest problem because Daimler is a global company, right? And, uh, so it also needs to have um, a global big data uh, lake. Um, and this is actually the, the the problem that we try to solve. So first off, the first thing is make the customer um, able to actually execute big data workloads on Azure. Um, in a secure fashion, this is the most important point. And um, a second, being able to have that um, uh, as a globally blueprint. Because, you know, there might be some business units here in Europe which develop some kind of algorithm. And uh, even if they're not allowed to share the data with their Asian colleagues or with their US colleagues, at least they can share their algorithm. So, and, and if everything is running on the same infrastructure, they could just basically start the code of the other region and it will work. Yeah. 
that. So yeah, that's, been, that's, a, that's an important point for sure. That uh, you know that I know Europe has you know some some uh, you know GDPR. There's very strict you know privacy and data sovereignty laws where data has to remain uh, you know within the confines of of uh, you know of the European Union. Um, so you're saying that you, you can, if you had, uh, you know, things like machine learning algorithms or, um, you know, queries and that sort of thing that, 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 you know, it's easy to be able to share those on the same service within Azure because the service is the same in the U.S. as it would yep. be in Europe and you can isolate data and put data in different islands in, in that regard. Exactly. So this is uh, this is a cool thing about it, and it's not only Europe. It's also in Asia. It's uh, it's also in China. It's also in Japan, in Korea, and mm -hmm. uh, all over the globe. You have uh, such kind of rules. Uh, so that's why having like a, um, a similar architecture globally makes things much more easier. And let's let's talk about the things that we actually implemented. So this is a very uh, oversimplified uh, drawing of that, of course. But it, some things are, um, are are very 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 clear here. So the main thing why this happened, what this happened is um, is uh, our capability, which uh, started end of 2017, to encrypt data at rest with a customer created key. So this is um, formally known as, or also known as, bring your own key capabilities. So some of our uh, services, uh, starting from the Azure SQL database or the storage services, they support um, encryption at rest or so-called transparent data encryption. And the one special flavor of that is if you use um, an Azure Key Vault uh, in its premium, um, this premium SKU, you can use keys that have been actually generated by the customer. And uh, then, in some nice marriage ceremony, um, copy it to the to the Azure Key Vault on Azure, and um, then be used by those um, data services. And this gives Standard the maximum control over the keys. So whenever yeah. they feel somehow unsecure in their cloud platform, they can actually um, delete the keys in the Key Vault, and all the services that were using those keys would just produce garbage. And this is exactly the behavior that Daimler wants. Daimler. And like all other uh, companies that I've been working with here in Germany, which are very, let's say, security focused, love this kind of feature. So uh, having the possibility to have an, an, an hardware security module on, prom on premise, uh, creating the keys, uploading them to Azure, and then having the complete control over the keys and the data. So, so, so it's important to know because our services also work without the customer needing to do that. So if a customer yeah. is, is it, you know, it doesn't have such strict security requirements, or if they're they're um, you know willing to take on the way that we actually go about rolling and recycling those keys, um, they can use the service as is. However, we provide the flexibility for them to to you know bring their own for circumstances where they want to make it even more secure and have you know control over the encryption keys that are used. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so this is the main this is the main thing. And one big, um, that one big pillar actually for building that platform is that everything that gets um, somehow persisted on Azure has to support that uh, bring your own key scenario. Um, so things like um, SQL database um, or storage. Um, and this was, let's say, one main design criteria for this complete platform. It doesn't matter too much what kind of compute is on top. It uh, it only matters um, the storage and the data that's persisted uh, in our different uh, services. You yeah. know, this is a great point that Satya made this week. You know, while we're at this event, was that you can't claim trust; you have to earn it. Yeah. And I think this is a great process for us, and I think this is a, a big step we've done over the last year and a half. Right, right. right? Yep. It's so really building new exactly. trust with our customers. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and this is also a big part of the fun of this project. So uh, we were challenging internally our product groups uh, in improving and um, having more services supporting that those this kind of. Um, this kind of uh, feature, and I feel like um, that this is really a great thing. That actually our customers push us to be better and better and better continuously, and we on other side we also re we react to that feedback and work together in something like a real partnership together with the customer, and uh, just improve. And everybody in the end uh, wins in this kind of scenario. And this is what I love about this project. 
Yeah, that's tough. You know, partnership, I think, is overused hype a lot of times and hyperbole in customer engagements. But, you know, it's really great when it actually comes true because yep. the value that comes out is just amazing. And yep. the customer's happy, right? Yeah, exactly. Yep, yep. <laughs> and yeah. it's a great customer success story. I mean, so, so in this data, you know, I see, or this picture, rather, on, on the bottom, I see the Daimler premise and, uh, you know, some, some data source. I'm, I'm assuming this is on-premise data stores that you're ingesting into the lake in different geographies and... Um, you know, why don't you kind of you know click us through what uh, what they were trying to yeah. do? Of course. So I mean, besides the um, the architecture and all the services that need to be set up um, on Azure, there's also always a part that needs to be uh, managed on premises. Um, and uh, one big part of that is so there are actually three different scenarios for um, data in um, data ingestion from on premises. First of all is especially in the first phase of the project, is uh, the ability to actually uh, make sure that all the data from on-premises is actually being copied or has been copied or replicated to Azure. And uh, so this is the first scenario. And this is a, a tough thing, you know. If you have on-premise something like um, um, 150 uh, nodes um, and under the hood an HDFS with a petabyte of data and people still working on that data, um, until actually it's been sundowned, you need to make sure that binary each and every bit has been um, replicated to Azure to some kind of other storage, okay? Yeah. And um, this is something that's very interesting because we don't have a service for that out of the box, um, but we have a rich partner ecosystem. And for that yeah. case, we use um, we use Vandisco, uh, Vandisco Fusion, and they actually um, uh, enable us to, to, uh, to do two things. First of all, replicating all the data from the on-premise data lake. It's actually decommissioned that one. And on the other hand side, also making sure that the link, because uh, we only were able to establish a VPN between on-premises and, and Azure, is okay. not saturated 100% by just decommissioning of data. So actually those two really compelling features um, made it possible to, in the end, decommission the cluster after, I would say, uh, nine months. And wow. um, yeah, and for, for the customer, this was this was really huge. And we were 100% sure that all the data is there. Yeah. So, so you, so that product facility, it, 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 you're saying they had a VPN tunnel in place so you could actually throttle yeah. some of that? that migration of data and it yeah. and that was completely copied over after that nine month period that they could they could decommission what they had well not only that but it's a petabyte I mean, right yeah that's that's, just, that's a lot of that's data. just petabytes yeah yeah, yeah. That's, that's crazy so and, and um, yeah I mean, you, you think about that in any context of of you know shipping drives or or you know having <laughs> yeah, a tent, forget that yeah you know <laughs> tent, oh, okay. tent, tent network circuit it's, it's going to take a while yeah, yeah. I, mean, I mean you can do this we have also project we have also products for that like the azure data box or in yep. data box heavy but in the end if uh, if still someone is working on that data maybe it's just changing a couple of megabytes or a couple of gigabytes here and there it's really cumbersome to find out the delta and therefore you need yep. to have a service which is actually doing that for you and this is where one disco supported uh, okay. right, right, right. Allowed migration cut copies over the changes as they're occurring to be able to allow them to cut over. Okay, very nice. Okay, got it. And the second scenario, which is equally uh, important, is you know, Daimler on, on this picture, they're just four data sources, but actually, that's not quite true. Um, I mean, there are multiple thousands uh, of data sources, thousands of SQL databases, thousands of, um, of uh, NAS shares thousands of other data sources and everything that you can think of. And in order to, to basically onboard that data, uh, we use the, um, the data factory, the Azure Data Factory in a hybrid fashion. So having on-premise and high availability cluster of integration runtimes and uh, moving the data from on-premises um, to Azure. And therefore we are still using um, Azure Data Factory. And I think meanwhile, this is the, I think the, one of the biggest projects on the on the globe for Azure Data Factory because there are hundreds and thousands of uh, pipelines going on each and every day. So, so okay, so so Wayne Disco very good for moving piles of data, you know, for from like data lakes on prem into to oh. Azure and then you know Hadoop clusters and that sort of thing. And then uh, you know Data Factory very good for like transactional data or other you know smaller data stores that um, you know that you want to replicate or, or move yeah. data. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and last but not least, you know, uh, Daimler has a lot of production plants all over the globe, 
And production plants typically have um, a lot of devices which uh, generate a lot of sensor data. And that mm -hmm. sensor data, uh, you can't, uh, uh, let's say, uh, send that in batches. I mean, you can do that, but then you lose all the real-time um, flexibility or the real-time integration. And uh, in order to implement that, uh, we, uh, used, um, we used Kafka in the end. So we were, there's a still a big fight internally in the architects group between Kafka and Event Hub. But so far Kafka won because they support the bring, bring your own key. I mean, now you could ask, hey, it's a message broker. Why do you need bring your own key? Because under the hood, uh, Kafka and also like, like Event Hub, they store the data in partitions and actually they store data of the customer. And this, I don't know if you remember that, that first rule, everything that persists data needs to be uh, encrypted with bring your own key. So the customer insists on having that part encrypted as well. But this is now also a really good example for the partnership between Daimler and Microsoft. Now Event Hub gets that feature as well. So Event Hub will have uh, bring your own key support as well. And um, yeah, so maybe the, the architecture will change there um, and um, use, use the Event Hub instead of Kafka. I, mean, I think that's the important point. One of the purposes of the show that there's all these Lego blocks we have available in Azure, and there, you know, there, there's a solution that would solve the problem. You know, the event hubs for for um, you know that that would have worked, but it didn't solve some of the security requirements. And we have you know other other you know partnership solutions mm -hmm. or other partner solutions that can run in Azure, and you know that's an example of how we you know, solve the customer's problems by you know using services that. that could yeah, run an Android. Non Microsoft products still can be first class citizens. Exactly. In the cloud, yep. Yep. Right? Yep. yep. And um, this is also, I mean, then if you go one level up, I mean, now we talked about actually how to uh, bring all the data to Azure. Uh, we talked about One Disk, we talked about Azure Data Factory and about Kafka for streaming. And then um, on top, we uh, created something like a three tier storage architecture. And for the three-tier storage architecture, we used as a baseline, as a basis, um, a landing zone, which has been implemented using an Azure Data Lake store. Uh, still at that point in time, Gen 1, but we are now in a transition to Gen 2. And uh, on top, um, um, uh, several layers for, uh, for which enables the customer to actually share data. That is also a big benefit that I see in our, in our services is that um, if you use the right services, you can implement two things. First of all, audit and uh, up down to the uh, or down to the storage level. If you use uh, Azure Active Directory authentication, and second, you are allowed the customer to share data, not copy it around. And this was one big design pillar that we enable the customer to share data. And this is one really important thing because the, our customers are on a journey to um, to digital transformation, and some of them um, need to be a data data-driven company and uh, so sharing of data is essential for that and using our services in that regard as a data lake store gen one enabled the customer to do that and we're also here in a trans transition as i said to Azure data lake store gen two because it offers uh, more features has more features yeah and uh, yeah so and then uh, um i see data bricks there so i'm guessing that that's uh uh, you, know, you have some, some notebooks there that you're doing some analysis on some of that data? Yeah, some notebooks is good. <laughs> we present our product, uh, I think per region, uh, something like uh, at least uh, 70, 80 uh, workspaces. Workspaces, oh. not notebooks. Holy cow. Okay. Wow. Uh, it's more like uh, 50 uh, HD insights, uh, most probably something like 100 to 150 data lake stores. Um, I would say at least 30 SQL uh, data warehouses, and um, yeah, it's, uh, it became really huge. And the customer, you know, on-premises that just had a, a bunch of use cases running on that. Um, on Azure, it's like uh, hundreds, and uh, this is what, 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 you know, makes me proud that we enabled our customer um, to actually be really productive. Yeah. In, in, a, in a quick fashion and retire equipment that they had on-prem. Actually, I have a question about that. Was that equipment that was like, is that a planned obsolescence of that, you know, or retirement of that, of that hardware that they were using previously? Or was, were we just trying to address the, the agility and, and the problems of, of them being not able to scale globally um, and being able to deliver a solution to their users? Well, scaling globally was the, uh, certainly the, the biggest thing, but I mean, the, the hardware that was on-premises on, on premises, um, 
um, actually, in the hardware wasn't big of the problem. It's more, it was more like the software and the flexibility. Nobody cared about hardware. Yeah. Okay. Oh, well, well, that's that, that's a that's that's an important that's an important part. There's there's lots of different reasons why customers go to the cloud, and and this is actually a really compelling one from my point of view that we have services all over the globe that, that benefited them yep. and yeah. address their their data privacy and data security requirements, and you know more so than what they could accommodate with their own data centers. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yep. Yeah. Okay. You know what the customer got out of that is actually. Beforehand, you need to know. Um, I mean, what we what we created is something like um, a big data platform that is um, allowed to store um, really, really sensitive data for the customer. Mm -hmm. And for that project, um, before this uh, ex sort of project, uh, the customer always needed to do for each and every project an individual security assessment. And this always took time and uh, took uh, took away, um, yeah, a lot of. Um, Lot of time for the project, and they couldn't uh, really concentrate on on their business. They're more like uh, concentrating on fulfilling all of the security regulations. Now they have a central uh, service for that, and they could just onboard on that, and they're they're much much faster uh, and actually being productive. And this is one of the biggest benefit of this um, of this platform. Yeah. Okay, that's I, that's cool. I mean, you, you know, you, if you look at this diagram, you just see a couple of services, and it, it looks like a simplistic diagram. But the value is providing the customer to be able to analyze petabytes of data, and you know, and and take and ingesting data from all of these disparate sources into a singular location, being able to do analytics on that. And I also see machine learning off to the side. Um, I, I, I'm, yeah, is that uh, I'm, I'm assuming that that was was that a, a big piece of the solution, or is that are you just using it for doing some uh, you know, interesting analysis on on uh, you know some of this these you know these pieces of data. Now that you've got them all in one place, I mean they're doing all. Uh, you know, meanwhile I, I actually don't know exactly which kind of things they they are executing on this. Uh, okay. Uh, it, executing on this platform, but for sure they are they're doing a lot of machine learning. They get a lot of. Um, I mean they have a lot of um, data for predictive maintenance, um, for example, uh, from from car telemetry, or uh, for example. Um, Doing recommendations for the after sales uh, department for certain parts, uh, selling parts, or also helping, I don't know, Formula One department. You know who won the Formula One, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, maybe, maybe they use this service. I can't tell maybe. them. But in the public, maybe they did. Maybe they, they uh, won because of that. Huh? And yeah. Maybe somebody told me something like this, but I don't know. Um, <laughs> You know so, what I'm hearing? I'm hearing a, a data strategy that, for, you know, for a long time I've I've seen, you know, the industries around and you know, hypothesize that you know there's data that, there's decisions and data that need to be made, but no one in the industry or any industry for a long time has really been able to use data to make key business decisions. But here Daimler is has spread it across the com their company yeah. like a religion, right? Yep. I mean, they have really driven to a we're we're using data to make decisions to yeah. further our investments and our you know innovations and whatnot. For sure. For sure, right? I mean, but in how many companies do you see that where you, you see pockets sometimes, right? But never a unified strategy. And this is an, I think another great case where the services and the scale of the cloud of our cloud services have allowed a company to actually become a global strategy. Right, right, and and also you know data is a is a currency and very invaluable. Exactly. So you know I, I think I saw I heard a statistic the other day that you know ninety percent of the data that exists online today was generated in the past two years. Yeah, yeah, so, right, yeah, right, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so and I think the companies like Daimler are, are are you know recognizing some of the cool things that, and and unique things you can do to make decisions. To drive your business. Well, to their own yeah. point, they didn't even have the power to do that before, right? I mean, it's like they, they admit it, it's like our on prem couldn't do it. We right. couldn't scale it. Right. Yeah, you know, this is great. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, this is a really great story. Thank you very much for, for coming uh, coming and talking with our audience uh, you know, about how you know your how Daimler is able to yeah. make use of some features of Azure in a, in a really cool and compelling way. Um, you know, also highlighting you know that there's features of Azure that maybe they couldn't use directly, but they um, you know, found a solution that you know from some of our partners that was able to function in Azure. So, you know, very interesting to to hear you know how you stitched this together and how this this ended up you know providing a value to Diamond. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. It was a pleasure talking to you to you and also uh, explaining that to you guys and. Uh, 
Yeah. All Great. right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Maybe we'll have you on again, uh, you know, sometime. And understand you're you're potentially uh, you know exploring some other roles. So so maybe uh, if you if you land in some place cool and start doing some yeah. cool things, we'll have you back on, and uh, you can ah. you can do some of that. <laughs> Ever data explorer. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, that might be a hmm. That might be a good one. Yeah. Well, thanks, Andy. We really appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, we really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Yep. Have, 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 have